is good at, watch him pulls his trigger. Hey, what's going on YouTube? The first few clips in this video were of me doing some three gun practice using guns with Trigicon optics. One being the Trigicon RMR, which I've already reviewed as part of my Glock 34 MOS. And the other, the review topic of this video is the Trigicon MRO mounted on my rifle. I've had this optic on my rifle for several months now, have shot many events with it, and in comparison to the EOTex and aim points that I've used in the past, can say that the MRO has surpassed many of my performance expectations of a premier electronic optic. Like many of my videos, you are watching the machete editing order from when the segments were recorded. So let's take a quick rewind to several months prior to the segment showing the initial unboxing and mounting. It does come in Trigicon's signature hard packaging. The accessory pouch includes an Allen key, Trigicon warranty information, Trigicon products poster that I just tore, and a product manual. mounting instructions. There are four hex screws securing the optic to the base. And just for my personal peace of mind, I always like to undo the optic mounting and reattach, verifying that it was secured with blue Loctite. In this case, it did come from the factory with blue Loctite, but for my personal peace of mind, of course, I like to redo it. And this is just the base itself that my optic came with. Some models will come with the absolute co-witness riser mount, but mine came with the lower third witness co-riser mount. If you don't like any of the factory mounts, there is no shortage of aftermarket options available for you to choose whatever mount you want. My Trigicon MRO will primarily be used on my Colt Daniel Defense, and it goes without saying that when you first mount the optic, or whenever you're mounting the optic, you do verify that the firearm you're mounting to is unloaded. And even the factory base feels like it should have a very repeatable return to zero once removing and remounting because there's almost no wiggle in the Picatinny rails. Short arm of any Allen key should be enough to not accidentally strip the screws. There we are, all mounted. One quick note before diving into the review in depth, I am reviewing the first generation Twitchcon MRO. There is another model, the MRO Patrol, new for 2017, that is pricier but lower speed and higher drag because it's heavier, but with some additional features that may or may not be relevant for prospective new site owners. For now, let's take a look at the technical specifications of the first generation Trigicon MRO. The Trigicon MRO is designed and manufactured domestically. The housing is 7075 T6 aluminum. Trigicon is known mostly for their tritium and fiber optic sites, such as the Trigicon RMR, which requires no batteries, but the MRO is powered by a CR2032 battery. When turned on 24-7, 365, it has a battery life of five years at the middle brightness setting, which is comparable to the most commonly referenced competing electronic optic, the Aimpoint T2. 
there are eight total clicks of brightness adjustment with the first two settings being night vision optic compatible. One subtle but much appreciated feature is how the adjustment dial is on top of the optic so it's easy to adjust with either hand which is relevant if you shoot ambidextrously. Some other reviewers have argued that the top protrusion of the illumination dial is unreasonably obstructive to your field of view, but the alternative is lateral placement of the dial, such as on this Bushnell optic, and I personally feel having less obstructed horizontal peripheral vision is more important. The 2MOA dot is visible in any daylight environment, but no CR2032 powered optic is going to be as bright as an EOTEX hologram reticle. The emitter is located at the nine o'clock position in the tube and is very low profile. The windage and elevation knobs sit flush with the housing and have 70 MOA of total travel. Each click represents half MOA at 100 yards. With the OEM lower third co-witness mount, the sight will weigh about six ounces, it's advertised at 5.9 ounces. Higher speed and lower drag after market mounts can bring the weight down slightly. The Aimpoint Micro T2, on the other hand, is advertised to weigh 3.3 ounces without the mount and 4.6 ounces with the mount. Where the Trigicon MRO really stands out from the rest of the compact rifle optic class is the front objective lens. Being 25 millimeters in diameter compared to the Aimpoint T2's front objective at 20 millimeters. The wide objective lens helps reduce the looking down a pipe tunnel vision effect of most other red dot sights. Oh, and the optic is waterproof. There are some O-ring seals around the battery cap and the adjustment dials and the front and rear objective lens. So if your rifle ever does get in an actual boating accident, the optic is fine. The optic does have idiosyncrasies, but most are not relevant to overall performance. The front objective lens is installed at an angle but this is because the nature of red dot reflector sight technology requiring a curved or angled objective to properly project the reticle. It is more noticeable on the MRO than other red dot sights because of the large objective lens, but it is indeed a feature, not a bug. EOTech uses lasers to project a 3D hologram, so they are not confined to the same objective glass constraints and having a viewing window akin to a heads-up display. All reflex style optics require some amount of glass tint to display the reticle to its optimum clarity. The view down the optic does give off blue tint, but it is more noticeable when looking at white backgrounds or under artificial lighting. In other environments, and especially through daylight, any tint is all but imperceptible. When looking through the optic at extreme angles though, the tint is more pronounced. And speaking of extreme angles, the next discussion is about parallax. Yes, the Trigicon MRO will have parallax errors when looking through the sight at extreme angles, but saying as much is pointless as all electronic optics, including EOTEX and Premier rifle scopes, will have parallax errors if you look through the optic at extreme viewing angles relative to how the sight was zeroed. In any case, you should be trying to have a consistent cheek weld when shooting, and the practical effective range of the MRO makes sight parallax errors more irrelevant. Finally, the last major idiosyncrasy about the MRO is that the optic is not a true zero magnification. I couldn't perceive any fisheye or lens edge distortion, but it will feel like a 1.05 times magnification when looking through the optic. This is more pronounced at close ranges and at extreme viewing angles. This is again a design challenge to minimize distortion and view refraction when working with the reflector sight design and Trigicon's large objective does amplify these nuances. This is another hardly noticeable facet but it is still worth mentioning. I used my MRO on a rifle I built based on the aesthetics of the M4A1 SOP Mod Block 2. From the Daniel Defense RIS 2 rail to the Colt M4 receivers and the Colt 14.5 inch M4A1 heavy barrel, almost all the rifle's components are used in theater i.e. seen in the wild, with obvious exceptions being the muzzle brake, 
which is used to mount my Griffin armament suppressor, and the fire control group being semi-automatic only. The trigger I have installed in my rifle is the Hyperfire HyperTouch 24C, and I am still impressed with the light pull weight and quick reset. I do have a Geisley trigger ready to install to make the rifle more authentic to those used in theater, but I'm still waiting on the next recipient of this Hyperfire. It does seem ironic to mount one of the lightest rifle optics onto such a heavy rifle setup, but I am still working my way up to my dream optic for this rifle, which is the Trigicon ACOG. Besides, Premier optics are stable investment. They hold their value well and can last a virtual lifetime of shooting for the average enthusiast. There are many potential rifles that I can use the MRO on once I have my final optic set up for this rifle. As a compact red dot optic, the reduction in weight over an optic such as an Aimpoint Pro or an EOTech is a major selling point. Although it may only be five to six ounces lighter than a full size optic, the difference is noticeable due to the optic placements around the rifle's center of gravity and you don't have to be building a race gun to appreciate the reduction in weight and associated improved rifle handling. With unlimited eye relief and low parallax error, a red dot excels in close quarter shooting environments from zero to 200 yards. Because you won't have the precision of a scope, the MRO isn't the best tool if you want tight groups on paper. Rather, you should expect to be shooting at torso-sized targets or silhouettes at longer ranges when using the MRO so that any parallax error is marginal. You can extend the effective range of the MRO by adding a magnifier. Although Aimpoint and EOTech make some of the higher-end magnifiers available, this magnifier is the Burris AR Tripler, which I've reviewed previously. The dot is still very clear when looking through the magnifier, and because of the tight eye box, the consistent eye position needed to resolve the sight picture helps in minimizing parallax at longer ranges. But be aware, it is still possible you won't see a super crisp dot if you have astigmatism. There may be a halo effect or a blurry dot depending on your personal vision limitations. Trigicon has military contracts for their products, so you have complete peace of mind in trusting a Trigicon product on your home defense rifle. With such a long battery life, you don't have any dials to fidget with to turn on your optic once you take your rifle out of the safe. Competition shooters will also consider the Trigicon MRO for their rifle optic as they are always trying to reduce their equipment weight to help turn in faster course times. An inevitable question many viewers always ask is that is there any reason to buy a Premier optic over a budget alternative such as a Primary Arms or a Bushnell? The answer depends on your goals for what you want your rifle to do and what you want to get out of your shooting experience, i.e. philosophy of use. The short answer is that if you're watching my video, chances are you're not a military contractor or a police officer looking for their next rifle optic and you don't need a premier red dot optic. For most enthusiasts, the budget red dot sights will work reliably enough as a range toy or a competition rifle. It is up to you to decide whether the additional features, such as a large objective window, is worth the multi-hundred dollar price difference. However, for the die-hard enthusiasts, the Trigicon MRO provides the next level of peace of mind and durability and performance. And as mentioned previously, Premier Optics maintain their value well provided you don't abuse them and mar the glass. As a modern tactical gear enthusiast, I enjoy using higher-end gear. That's as simple of a motivation as anyone needs to chase as Fancy Nuts would say, the second kind of cool. The MRO is constructed with the same quality standards as Trigicon's military contract products, which means you can count on a lifetime's worth of durability. Since the day that I took the optic out for its initial zeroing session, I've had zero problems with it. There are no shortage of aftermarket mounts that you can buy for the MRO, many of which are much higher speed and lower drag than the OEM mount. There are also housing covers and kill flashes available. The MRO is available for purchase for almost $200 less than the Aimpoint T2, which is arguably the most comparable product in performance for its size and weight class. If you're in the market for a premier optic, the Trigicon MRO gets my highest recommendation due to its light weight, large objective window, long-term reliability, and high relative value. The only problem that I can see anyone having with the Trigicon MRO is that you will like it so much it puts you off of buying any other red dot sight. This is the last red dot optic 
you will ever want and need. Thank you very much for watching my video review of the Trigicon MRO. Be sure to leave a like rating on this video if I was helpful and informative, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more gun and gear reviews. My name is David, and I will see you next video.